This is a $120 option we see right here. That's not a hubcap. You know, Ford Fairlane, you know, cars like this would have like a, a fake looking brake drum with, you know, the effect. Well, this is the real thing. Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Berniston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with uh, something kind of cool, a 1966 Pontiac Grand Prix. And Grand is big. Pre Grand Prix, big stuff. 1962, first year for the Grand Prix. It was Pontiac's uh, first full-sized personal luxury car. Uh, and Grand Prix's were strictly two doors, strictly hard tops, except for 1967 when it was a one-year convertible Grand Prix. But otherwise, these things were strictly uh, personal fun machines. No wagons, no four doors, no family cars. These were strictly for the young executive, he or she, whoever they may be. Now, the base price on this car, when it was new in 1966, would have been $3,400. $492, which was $709 more than a Pontiac GTO. Which one would you have bought? If you liked your muscle full size, the Grand Prix was your choice. Now these came standard with a 389 four barrel. I could get a 421 tri-power in these things, up as much as 376 horsepower. But the beauty of the Grand Prix was how the tail lights were integrated into this die cast metal structure here. The peekaboo effect, just really not seen on any other Pontiac car. And this one here, of course, has been in the yard, staying alive is no accident. Governor's Highway Safety Bureau, Michael Dukakis, Governor. This would be like 1985 or so. Go green, go green wave. Must be a Boston Celtics thing, I suppose. But you start to see a lot of drive 55, stay alive stickers, of course. This car in the mid 70s would have been a gas hog and probably would have been on its second, third or fourth owner on its way rapidly to the junkyard. It's a sad thing because these are beautiful cars. Um, now, 1966 was a big year for Pontiac. In fact, they sold 837,000 cars, putting them in number three spot behind Chevy and Ford. And that's a long way from 1960 when Pontiac sold less than half as many cars, 369,000, and was in fifth place. And it was really all about the youth market. The GTO was a big part of it. But for older kids, the Pontiac Grand Prix was the answer to their, their uh, question. Now, something cool on this one is the eight lug wheels. This is a $120 option we see right here. That's not a hubcap. You know, Ford Fairlane, you know, cars like this would have like a, a fake looking brake drum with, you know, the effect. Well, this is the real thing. This is actually an aluminum brake drum at the back, which bolts to the hub. And then there are eight acorn nuts that secure the outer wheel to the aluminum drum. When you take the wheel off, what you get is this. This is an eight lug wheel right here, minus the drum. The drum stays with the car. Now, the only thing is, if you've got a flat tire in one of these cars in the middle of nowhere, you are in trouble because tire machines grab into the center five lug nuts. Well, Pontiac in the trunk of this thing would supply you with a plate that bolts to this and then allows you to adapt to a tire machine to dismount the old tire and mount a new one. Uh, and up front, we'll see what that looks like in a second. A little bit different, but the crazy thing is that these brakes were huge. I think they were 11 or 12 inch diameter, two and a half inches wide. These would stop a freight train, but Pontiac never allowed them for use on the GTO. They always had this nine and a half inch mini drum, kind of weird. So these big drums here uh, were specific to the full size cars. 120 bucks, you get these things on a wagon or a four door, any full size Pontiac you wanted, you get these wheels on it. Speaking of big brakes, Buick also had an issue with, uh, with big brakes. And we look at the front of that 66 or so Buick. And on the front of Buicks from 1959 through 69, those are the 12 inch aluminum drums, which were Buick's answer to the aluminum brake drum question. And like the Pontiac drum, they have an integrally cast iron wear surface, which is baked into that finned aluminum drum. But unlike the Buick, which has a conventional wheel that bolts on and hides that beautiful aluminum drum up front, Pontiac had these gorgeous looking drum hub combinations. Now this one here is lacking the trim ring on the outside and the center cap. But when these things are fully dressed out, they're truly beautiful wheels. Now here's the, uh, this is collectible automobile right here from December of 2005. It's hard to imagine this magazine is almost 20 years old. I bought this thing new, but inside we have the evolution of the Grand Prix in the styling cycle. You can see right here, top left, as it made its way from concept to closer to reality. Uh, and, um, just a beautiful car. And these are often called the Venturi style, not Ventura, but Venturi, where they have sort of a, a tapered effect that grows like a Venturi in a jet engine or anything else. But again, just beautiful stuff. You can see on this, you can see those eight lug wheels on everything from the two plus two 
to the uh, Grand Prix, including the wagon on the right-hand side. So the eight lug wheels were not just for muscle cars. You could get them on any full-size Pontiac, including that big executive wagon of the Safari, but never on a GTO. Don't know why. Now on this one, we can't get the door open, but you could get a four-speed manual or a three-speed manual in these things. This one has the automatic, maybe we'll put the camera in the window, and you can see the console over on the passenger side sitting there with that beautiful uh, simulated wood facing. I think that actually might be thin walnut up on the dash as well. And again, a very sporty car. These were strictly bucket seat cars, although you could get a bench if you wanted it, no extra cost, but most people bought these things with the buckets up front and the bench in the back. And uh, it's a very sporty rear view mirror right here. Long, beautiful fenders on these things. And up front, we can see where the brake drum is gone. Now behind it, you had conventional 11 by three inch shoes and the spindle we see right here, uh, on the front of these things, the aluminum drum had an integrally cast um, hub, if you will, that went to this. So it's different from the back. Those actually can unbolt, but the front aluminum drums on these things were meant to be on the front only. And then, of course, they had the same eight lug wheel that bolted around the beautiful finned aluminum structure. Now, at the front of this thing, it's unmistakably Pontiac. The stacked headlights, new for 63. And here they are here in full swing. And it was so impressive that Ford borrowed the design in 1965 through 67. Uh, but here we have it in its, in its original form. Just a beautiful prow shape on this thing. The peaked nose right here, seen for the first time on Pontiacs, I believe in 1959, uh, the first beak, if you will. And this beak effect right here was used all the way through the 70s and the early 80s. And, and again, Pontiac beak. Now here is something interesting here. Under the hood, uh, okay, the motor's gone, but this would have had nothing less than a 389 four barrel, potentially a 421 tri-power under the hood of this puppy. Now this here is a 1965 Pontiac manual or brochure, again, one year before this car was built, but we can learn a lot from it. And we can see right here, the various engines. Look at this, how many engines were possible for full-size Pontiac? 256 horse, 290 horse, 325, 333, 338, and then uh, 255. But again, all these engines possible. Meanwhile, in GTO land, just two engines right here, 335 or 360. And another way of saying that the GTO basically used a Pontiac Grand Prix engine. Now, getting back to the brakes, we see on this page here at the bottom, it says here, safety equipment, brakes, aluminum drums, Tempest Le Mans and GTO. You're like, wait a minute, what? Drum brakes on a GTO? Yes, aluminum. You could get aluminum drums at the front of your GTO. They're a nine and a half inch diameter. We did a little video on those earlier. We'll put a link to that here in the video. But it's a different thing from the wheels, aluminum hub and drums on full sized cars. So again, aluminum drums are possible on a GTO, but it was a nine and a half inch mini drum, whereas the full size Pontiacs got the real deal, these eight lug deals right here. So a lot of folks don't remember that aluminum drums could be had on a GTO, but it wasn't the same thing as the eight lugs seen on the 1960s uh, full-size Pontiacs like this one here. Now this one here, again, it's the two-door model. Uh, again, the 67 model year, you could get a convertible for one year. And my former Barrett Jackson co-host, Christy Lee, her grandmother bought one of those things new. In fact, Christy Lee still owns that car to this day. So if you want a Grand Prix convertible, you had to buy it in 67. And from there on, it was over and out. Now this one originally was slate gray metallic, a beautiful shade. You can see bits of it in various spots, had the optional vinyl top. And just the way that the sail panel here comes all the way back like this, the rear window has that reverse curve, just really beautiful styling on this thing. And it's sad to think that in the 1970s, these things were considered gas hogs. And I have to say that they were kind of prone to rust as was anything else on the roads here in Massachusetts back in, you know, any time it was driven throughout the winter. A couple of years later, you had a car that was starting to crumble. Uh, speaking of crumbling, if you like your sodas, here's a Pepsi can right here from probably, oh, 1975 or so before they went to the, the snap tops. But uh, again, speaking of rust, this is not an aluminum can. This is when cans were still made of steel. And yes, you can get your tetanus right here. Line up, folks. Tetanus, free tetanus all day long. But again, that's the story of the 1966 Pontiac Grand Prix, a grand prize of a full-size muscle car that actually helped Pontiac stay, maintain third place, selling 837,000 cars right behind Ford and Chevy, number three in Detroit. Kind of cool. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Bags YouTube channel and come back tomorrow for more Junkyard Crawl.